It's Belfield at Breakfast, and we're joined this morning not only by a megastar, but a superstar, and a gorgeous superstar at that. Mylene Class, how are you? That's very nice. I don't know if I can live up to that. Well, can I be honest with you? Go on. I'm deeply unattractive. <laughs> Clinically obese, and I'm not very blessed in the downstairs department either. <laughs> you sound like the perfect guy. Wicked. Is there any way I could ever get a date with somebody like you? Oh, stop that. Come on, now stop that. I'm serious. i tell you one thing. I mm. met Brad Pitt the other day, and he wasn't all that. Really? So, yeah. I've totally just, I mean, you know. Do you think you could be tempted by the larger man then? Oh, I love a guy with a little Ned. I love it. Mm. My, my fella's got a Ned. Oh, really? A Ned? I've never come across that expression before. Yeah, a little Ned. Just grab it and go, ooh. Oh, really? You're a yeah. grabber? Oh, yeah. you see, yeah, my yeah, type yeah. of woman. I love a grabber. Yeah, no, I, I, I like guys who've got Neds today. I like to be honest on my programme. Okay. I didn't like you in the beginning. I'm going to be oh truly God, that's honest. that's a little bit too honest. No, no, truly. <laughs> I found you really, really annoying. Really? Okay, yeah, well, honestly, fair truly. And then you did that reality nonsense. And then I suddenly realised that you're actually not just an average pop star that's been very lucky and has no talent. Then I see you playing the piano and then I hear you talking on the radio. And suddenly I'm in love with you. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, that's not fickle or anything, so that's really nice to know. Well, <laughs> what did I do that has so offended you in, in the beginning? I just found you, like, annoying. An honesty trip. Just annoying, really. You just kind of got on my nerves, on my man breasts. You just kind of irritated. On your moves, okay. Mm. Not only are you a sex symbol, but I love the fact that you've got a brain as well. I mean, I just wish that you'd given me a chance at the off. I mean, hopefully I would have proved not to have been so annoying. When are you going to go on tour with your piano again? Um, I do all the summer concerts, actually. So I play all the castles, which is really good fun because everyone brings a picnic and a, or a picnic blanket, and it just is quite a laugh actually. So um, yeah, uh, they they book those off quite far in advance, so I've got them for the next couple of years. What about this new album? Because I listened to it in the car the other day, yeah. and, and I was expecting you actually. It, it's kind of your favourite songs. There's no none of you in it, is there? No, I play the first track on the first album, but the first CD of both CDs. Yeah, but it's a bit. It's like I was expecting like two double CDs of Mylene Class doing the classics. No, you but... see, I've, I've I've released a piano album in the past, and I am playing the piano on the piano pieces on the album. But at the same time, I get asked about classical music such a lot. I used to be a teacher for 14 years, and um, people know that I love my class music and I wanted to put a compilation album out that represented classical music as a whole so you know there is the orchestral pieces there's the cello the opera and I don't sing opera and I don't play the cello so I've contributed with the piano pieces mm. at the same time there's the old favorites from Mozart and the new ones from Morricone now we're going to be honest on this program we've been honest so far and I'll be honest with you I, I like your honesty I think it's refreshing it's good to to have I get a lot of rubbish on this program I've got to be honest with you I'm okay. a whore I'll have anybody on anybody okay but most of it's rubbish I've got to be honest with you I okay. listen to this in the car and I'm driving a lot at the moment driving between Nottingham and Coventry and all over the country doing different gigs trying to earn a living and it really did make the trip so pleasurable you have picked kind of all of the tunes that I would put on my favourite classical album it's one of there the best so congratulations on that seriously truly thank you no well in fairness I did take this really seriously I think there's so many people that put their names or faces to certain books or products and things and I just thought right this is going to be my music for romance but I went into the EMI archives and it was like Harry Potter's library I grabbed every single piece and I listened to all of them and I thought right what is going to constitute as a good romantic piece and I wanted pieces that people would recognise you know to mystify the whole world of classical music not not make it intimidating just make it exciting and just to have pieces on there that people would know mm, I do a lot of advertising myself I'm the face of door knockers you know are you? and scatter cushions mm. <gasps> Gosh, you're good, you know. I am marvellous. I tell you, tremendous. The thing about you, you're really smart because you've got that kind of high-end ABC One classic FM demographic. Then you've mm. got the kids as well. I think mm. you're about the only one to do that of your generation, aren't you? I do I do count myself as very lucky because I have got my own like classical radio show and I get to release classical albums. At the same time, I've got a pop show in the evening and I get to present on, on a, quite a varied um, degree of programmes. And I just think it's really important because it's still the same person. You just get to wear different hats. So you never get bored and you get to express yourself on loads of levels and you just get to have a good time. Mm. I love talking to old people, so occasionally I do saga radio for the dead. <laughs> it's great. No, honest, it's true. And they don't argue back. Okay, that's good. A little birdie told me that you do a show on Radio Betamax in, in Coventry here. Is that true? 
Well, I have my, um, I've got a radio show that goes out all over um, GCAP, so mm. yeah. Come to us. I, to be honest with you, since I've been on the air, love, nobody's listening to that rubbish. I mean, you are wasting your time. I don't want to break any, you know, illusions that, you know, they probably sold it to you as the big show, but actually, I think you'd probably be better be my sidekick. But I'm on something. it already now, yeah? Mm, how long's your contract? <laughs> we can buy that out. It's no problem. Well, as long as I can guess on yours, I can just have a little trip to the dark side. You are clever, though. I mean, I think it is fascinating how you've managed to do that. You, you've rebuilt your career since uh, here saying all that rubbish with the pop idol nonsense. Yeah. Um, not many of them really have been very successful since, have I they? I don't think it's you? a case of rebuilding. I just think for a long time it's perseverance because I. it's not through nepotism that I've got my jobs. It's not, you know, through knowing people. It's just genuinely been through sheer hard work and determination. Mm. And just actually just having a little bit of faith in myself, thinking, you know what, you can just, just be yourself. You can just be a nice, normal person and get on with it and, and carry on working in this business. And, I, and hopefully I can prove that. I don't want to be disparaging towards the group you were in, but I think the reality was that none of you came out of it great because there was so much of that talk in the in the tabloid press about you not being very good and you failing. Mm -hmm. Nobody really got to see you as a person, you as yeah. a personality and you as a musician. And yeah, that's no, why I, I think you did that. have to rebuild. You literally had to, from the bottom, get people to realise, actually, you're not just this girl that's one of five yeah. that's, that's a nothing. Well, I did have an amazing time in the band. We played Wembley. We sold two million albums. But I did, like you said, I suppose there was the rebuilding in the sense that I had to show people that there was more to me and I love to play the piano and no one can take that away you can't blag it you can't bluff your way through a piano piece so I've done the live TVs I've made the recordings I've played the concerts and I think if you love it it shows as well and, and that's luckily touch wood what seems to be happening My I am grateful though I have to say for other if people have either bought the album or voted or just shown some support in some capacity that's the humbling bit because you think God there are people out there that really do approve of what I'm doing and that's great mm. my producer Tarquin's handed me a piece of paper saying he believes you're up the doff I just thought you put on a few pounds that's very nice of you no I mm. am I'm seven months pregnant good lord <laughs> how did that happen then well I played Miner's Music for Romance it worked <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't have happened if you'd been dating me. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> How are you feeling? How's it going? I mean, you're working so hard as well. I see you on everything at the moment. Um, I'm like your average 21st century working mum. That's what we do, you know. I, I, I take pride that I pay my own way and my own mortgage. And I love the work I do. So I don't want to just sit at home and twiddle my thumbs and just, ch you know, tick the dates off the calendar. So I have been working, whether it's through m &S or whether it's recording this album. Uh, there's been a lot that's been going on. And, and I like it that way. And the bubble comes with I mean because of the job that I've done I've been working for CNN going global and, and she's met so many stars and just had such a great time that there'll be lots of stories to tell her the um, album we recorded at Abbey Road I mean what a great what a great experience for a little unborn mm. now how have you managed to say, stay so glamorous because my wife from Elderhide she became 37 <laughs> stone when she was pregnant Oh, stop that. Listen, I've put the weight on, but, you know, I'm part of the sisterhood. That's what you're meant to do. When you're pregnant, you're supposed to put the weight on, and I'm enjoying doing that. Believe me, I've, uh, I have put it on. What are you eating at the moment? What are you fancying? I've got a chocolate biscuit right next to me and a can of fizzy pop. Hobnob? Um, I don't know what this is, actually. Hmm. It's chocolate coated. Have you had any kind of fascinations to eat carrots with mayonnaise or anything or anything peculiar? No, but I have wanted things at funny times. Uh, last week, I've sent the other half out. Bless him. He had to find mincemeat for me at 11.30 at night because I needed to make a bolognese. I thought you were going to say raw. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but put cheese on it and I'll have it. Mango with cheese, strawberries with cheese. I've gone for the variation on pineapple and a stick with cheese. Lovely. I think that's the way forward. It is interesting, as I say, when you look at what you do and how you do it. And now, as you say, you're going global with the CNN thing. Um, it is quite rare in this business. And I meet a lot of people and I've worked with a million of your type. But not many of them can link a sentence like you can and have the genuine personality. A lot of it is faked in show business, isn't it? How have you managed to create this persona and personality or was it always there? Were you born with it? <laughs> I don't think you create a persona. I know there are certain people that feel they have to adhere to a certain type of behaviour. Oh, come on, Miley, you know in TV, there's a lot of people who create this whole image well, that I isn't know, them. I know, the smile goes on, the mask goes on, and you think, hang on a minute, I thought you were a completely different person before. But um, I don't think with the job that I do, I've come from a show that, as you said, it was a reality show, uh, that people do know what I'm like, and, and to a degree that takes the pressure off because you can genuinely just be yourself. At the same time, the pressure comes on because if they don't like it you can't change it but I'm quite happy just just 
pottering along and trying to be as normal as I possibly can. I, I don't want to be like, I don't know, I don't join the madness. I'm quite happy to do my work and then go home at the end of the day and make my spaghetti bolognese at midnight. How glamorous. Ask me what I was doing last Saturday. Do you know what? What were you doing last Saturday? I was sat at home uh-huh. with my copy of the Saturday paper mm-hmm. with you, mm-hmm. naked with child. So you did know I was pregnant. It was all big bluff. That was all just a bit of shtick. Uh-huh. And I was sat there looking at it for several uh-huh. hours. I was uh-huh. outraged that you were naked. I was shaking my wrist at it's the piece of paper naked. for hours. It was, it was the special Demi Moore edition of celebrating being pregnant. One thing, well, obviously you're not going to get pregnant, but one thing a lot of pregnant women say, my own friends included, is that you just, it doesn't feel like your body. You feel like just, I don't know, there's this person that's creating life and it's just something that you want to celebrate and just, just get involved with. It's a fantastic feeling. And anyway, all my pregnant photos so far have been me in ice cream and pies. <laughs> I wanted one nice photo, do you know what I mean? How amazing, though, that you can be at this stage in your life and look glamorous. I've never had a point where I've seen a single picture of myself that I've been happy with, ever. No, everyone's like that. I'm no exception to the rule. I'll look at a photo and go, God, what am I doing with my chins? You know, everybody's like that. But at the same time, I'm not a model. I never set myself out up to be a model. I'm five foot five and I'm I'm making the most of what I've got, really. And my God, what a lot of it you've got to show at the moment. (laughs) I have at the minute. (laughs) That picture was unbelievable. Do you know, I just just feel really proud and, and I'm just really happy with what I've achieved and I'm really glad to be a mummy on the well I'm mummy to be Mm. and I just look at women at the moment just think god you are all goddesses you just I really am just so inspired by women at the minute because I don't know we're just carrying a child and we make babies I love it Mm. I don't want to make you nervous the idea of pushing an elephant through a polo mint how is that kind of being dealt with in your mind the way I'm dealing with it is my mum's done it she had three kids under the age of four and she was working as a nurse and there's lots of mummies out there that have had four or five kids so I'm just taking my inspiration from them Mm. well congratulations on everything this new album is tremendous seriously I had it on in my car and I've still got it in my car now I love classical music I mean I sit here playing all that rubbish by Nelly Fartoda every day and all that (laughs) stuff I love it but it doesn't really move me classical music does move me more than any other type of music and I think no I think it's because it has to dig deep because a lot of classical music doesn't have any words and when you think that pieces like Pachelbel's Canon that piece is what inspired um, Oasis to 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 write Don't Look Back in Anger and, and, and on all sorts of other pieces Pieces. So I just think that if you listen to classical music, there are certain pieces you will hear that you'll think, I think I know this. And you'll realise it's because you know it in a pop context. Mm. So it's inspired so many people. It's the reason it's been around for centuries. And it's getting it's, it's getting a sort of rejuvenation of an image, if you like. I read once that Britney Spears was inspired to write Baby One More Time because of Puccini. Oh, really? I'll leave it with you. Mylene Class, thank you very much for coming <laughs> on the programme. Thanks for having me.